very good morning to you all. Morning, um, Simon. Welcome. Welcome to Christ Church this morning. Um, as we gather together to hear the word of the Lord, to meet one another and to receive God's blessings for us. Um, we're in our summer season, so things are slightly different from normal. Um, we have colouring table down at the front, if anyone wants that. If, you want to, if that helps you to listen, go and do some colouring. Um, and there is a separate room, the Jericho room, just across the foyer is available for anyone who wants to go and run around, if that helps you listen as well. So feel free. We're beginning a short series uh, through the summer this morning on the Psalms. So we're going to be looking at a different Psalm each week. And appropriately enough, this morning we begin with Psalm 1. <laughs> we're not going to cover all 150 though, as is obvious. But we are beginning with number 1. Um, well, there's not so many of us as normal this morning, are we? We're a little bit spread out. So, um, in a moment, when we're singing our first song, so we're all on our feet anyway, and it won't be so obvious, if, if you want to sort of have a bit more of a sense of being gathered together by moving forwards and moving towards the middle, then do feel free to do so. That would be great. Well, probably the singing will sound better if we're more in a, in a group. So, uh, and you never know, you might make a new friend. Anyway, let's turn to the Lord, shall we? Let's begin our worship. If you're able, would you like to stand? And I'll lead us in prayer, and then we'll sing our first song of praise. Let us pray. God of grace, we thank you that you welcome us here this morning. That you know us through and through, everything that's on our hearts and minds today. And we want to bring ourselves before you in openness and honesty to acknowledge who you are in all your goodness to acknowledge who we are in all our frailty and to seek your blessing and to go deeper into our relationship with you we pray that you would meet us through your Holy Spirit and work amongst us in this hour through the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Let's praise God. Who else commands all the hosts of heaven?
else could rescue? Who else could rescue me from my failing? Who else would offer his only son? Who else invites me to call him Father? Only a holy God, only my holy could rescue us from all our failings. Let's bring before God our weakness, our failing and our hurts, seeking God's forgiveness. I invite you to pray this prayer line by line after me. Father God, we ask you to forgive us for the things we have done for the things we have said that do not please you. We are sorry. Help us to be more like Jesus. Ready to pray. Ready to help others. Ready to do your will in all things every day. Amen. Amen. Let's sing that same sentiment as we ask God to purify us from within.
loves us in this way, that he sent his son Jesus to be our saviour, so that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Through Christ, may the Father forgive us from all our sins, heal all our hurts, make good our failings, and strengthen us to live in righteousness and holiness all the days of our life. Amen. Amen. Do sit down, if you wish. Well, as we are going to uh, be looking at Psalms through the summer, um, before we dive into the detail of Psalm 1 in particular, I thought we might think just a little bit about the Psalms as a whole. The book of Psalms within the Bible comes in the Old Testament and um, reflect on what they are. Uh, And I do need a little bit of help for this from some of you. So I'm looking for people who have a favourite musical. Now it could be musical theatre, or it could be a film of any sort, an animation, or or West Side Story, or anything else. So does anyone have a favourite musical? Oh yes, we have a we have a starter for ten. <laughs> Come on over here, right? Favorite musical is West Side Story. West Side Story. Okay. Right. I'm going to come back to you in a minute. We have another one. Les Miserables. Les Miserables. Very good. Les, Les Miserables. So growing up in the north, I always thought it was Les Miserables. You yeah. see. <laughs> Because well, I knew him quite it's well. Another vote for Les Miserables. Another vote. Another <laughs> vote for Les Miserables. Right, okay. Any more? We've got one more. Okay. I'm going to have to run around keeping me fit this morning. Here we go. I should have put Strava on. It would count as a few miles. Okay. Right. Phantom of the Opera. Phantom of the Opera. Splendid. Okay, right. Now we're going to go back round. And the question is, now I find out how genuinely keen you are on it what is the opening song (laughs) what's the opening song of your favourite musical so the opening song of West Side Story is oh no uh, (laughs) can't remember never mind does anyone know does anyone know the opening song of West Side Story Uh, the overture yeah that's a good good answer good answer right the Jets the Jets the Jets. Okay. It's the Jets. Okay. Right. What, where were we next? We were Les Miserables next. Do we have any idea? Trevor was waving. I'm going, okay. We're going back to Trevor. A few more miles. Here we go. Hi, Rob. Round and round and round. The opening song well, sure of Les Miserables. Bit, but it starts about looking down. Look it's, down. It's all the Miserables looking down. Looking down. Warming, okay, right. Looking down. And then I've got to go all the way back round here and see if I can remember what the other musical was. Thank you. The opening song of Phantom of the Opera is, or might be... I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Any, anyone else know? Anyone know the opening song of Phantom of the Opera? No, okay. Right, I'll give you mine. I've been thinking about this all week. Okay, so my favourite opera is The Lion King. Yeah? And the opening song, I think, from memory, is The Circle of Life. Yeah? I would give you a quick blast, but I can't really sing very well, so I won't. Okay. 
But um, I hope this illustration is going to work. It might not. <laughs> but often, the opening song of a musical kind of sets the scene and encapsulates the whole story in, uh, you know, in a nutshell, doesn't it? Um, so the West Side Story, the opening song, if it's about the Jets, it's all about the two... West Side Story is the two gangs, isn't it? The Montagues and the Capulet. They're, they're mimicking Romeo and Juliet, so it's all about the conflict between the two gangs. So the song about the Jets kind of encapsulates that in a nutshell, doesn't it? Um, Les Miserables look down... It encapsulates the whole story, which is about how the people are being downtrodden in France at the time of the revolution. Yeah, the misery of the people uh, and how that is redeemed and overcome in the life of one particular person. And the Lion King, it's the circle of life. It's all about one king dying and his son growing up and becoming the next king and the tribulations there are along the way. So the opening number kind of encapsulates the story as a whole, in a way. You may be wondering what that's got to do with the Psalms. But here's an idea for you. So, um, the Psalms give various clues that they were intended to be sung because they're written in a poetic form and there's lots of mention in various of them to musical instruments. So, the general supposition is that they were sung, that they were songs. So... My way of thinking about the Old Testament, basically, is that it's a musical, yeah? Because there's lots of stories in it. There's a story of creation, and there's a story of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and there's a story of coming to the promised land with Moses, and then the story of King Saul and King David and King Solomon, and then all those other kings afterwards, and sometimes things went well, and sometimes things went badly. It's mainly just a great long story. So what are the psalms doing there? Well, the psalms are songs which belong to various points along the way in the story. So therefore, I think that means the Old Testament must be a musical, and the psalms is the soundtrack. <laughs> yeah? So... When a musical film comes out and you can buy the soundtrack on a CD or whatever, and you get just the songs, going to the Psalms is a bit like that. You get just the songs that belong throughout this long story, which is the Old Testament as a whole. That's what I think, anyway. You won't find that in a textbook, but <laughs> it gets me through the day. Okay, so if that's the case, Psalm 1 is a really important one to look at, because it will set the scene, it will encapsulate the whole thing. It will basically say, here's the fundamental thing that you need to know to hold in mind whilst you're listening to all the rest of the songs or whilst you're following the, along to the whole of the rest of the story. So it's a good one to start with for that reason. So let's turn to it now. So John is going to come and read Psalm 1 to us. Um, and it will be on the screen as well. And we're using a slightly unusual translation of it today just to help us to engage with it. So it will seem quite fresh, I hope, even if you know it already. God blesses those people who refuse evil advice and won't follow sinners or join in sneering at God. Instead, they find happiness in the teaching of the Lord and they think about it day and night. They are like trees growing beside a stream Trees that produce fruit in season and always have leaves. Those people succeed in everything they do. That isn't true of those who are evil. They are like straw, blown by the wind. Sinners won't have an excuse on the day of judgment, and they won't have a place with the people of God. The Lord protects everyone who follows him, but the wicked follow a road, that leads to ruin. Thank you, John. And um, Peter, sorry, could we just, the last verse, can we put it back up on the screen for a moment? Sorry to uh, disrupt your flow. There we go. Brilliant. Thank you very much. So let's see what Psalm 1 is saying to us. 
what sort of ideas it encapsulates and hold that as the sort of the undergirding principle for the, all the other psalms that we'll look at as we go through the summer. Psalm 1 essentially says something very simple. It's probably an oversimplification in a way, which might make us cringe slightly. But sometimes it's just helpful to oversimplify, to get a message across that really matters. And the message is a very simple contrast. And it's expressed in this version of the psalm in this way. The Lord protects everyone who follows him. But the wicked follow a road that leads to ruin. So Psalm 1, the starting point of the Psalms, the soundtrack for the whole of the Old Testament, in a way, says something very simple, that there are two sorts of people, or there are two ways to live. There's God's way, and there's the bad way. The good way and the bad way. Following God or rejecting God. Now, if you're anything like me, you will immediately want to say, hang on a minute, (laughs) life's not as simple as that. It's not always really obvious who are the goodies and who are the baddies, because we're all a bit mixed, aren't we? You know, I mean, we probably hope that we're amongst the people who are following God and trying to do what's right, and yet we've already confessed our own sins and failings. So, hmm, not quite as simple as that. And that's right, But every now and again, it's helpful just to remind ourselves of the absolute basics, the fundaments, the fundamental principles here, that there is a clear distinction between going God's way or turning away from God, doing what's right or doing what's wrong. Now, sometimes that's very, very stark and very obvious. Sometimes it's actually really complicated and difficult to work out. But we shouldn't allow the difficult occasions or the complicated occasions to make us think that there isn't really a right or a wrong. Because there is, fundamentally. Either we're seeking after God and wanting to do what's right in God's eyes, or we're not, or we're turning away from God. Now, it's exaggerated here, so the people who are turning away from God are referred to as the wicked, which sounds a bit harsh, Um, but it's probably an exaggeration for rhetorical effect. It's just emphasising the contrast. So let's just work with that contrast and see how it's expressed. Well, the main way that it's expressed is through an image. Peter, let's go for the images now. The image is of either a tree which is planted beside water and therefore thrives. Water is necessary for life. It's almost synonymous with life. And a tree which is well watered, and which has also the nutrients it needs, will flourish. It will have leaves which are strong and may be colourful. It will produce fruit or seeds. It will grow and get bigger. It will be strong. In contrast to that, a tree or a plant which does not have water, that does not have the source of life, will itself die. It will dry up. It will fall apart. Bits will break off. It will become lifeless. And those broken, lifeless bits will then just blow on the wind. They'll be carried away. They'll be pointless. They'll be fruitless. They will achieve nothing. It's a very stark image that brings out that basic contrast which the psalmist wants to convey. That God is the source of life. So going towards God, seeking after God, will always produce life. Turning away from God results in the opposite of that desiccation, dryness, sterility, barrenness. Thank you, Peter. We'll, we'll take, don't want to leave that one on the screen, so we'll, we'll, we'll move on. And the fundamental message 
which underlies that, which the psalm opens with, is that God blesses those who seek to do what's right. God blesses you when you seek to do what's right, when you follow God's way. God is actively concerned for you. God is involved in your life. God is looking out for you. God is perhaps protecting you, as it says in the final verse. Um, Peter, I wonder if we can get the text of the psalm back up on the screen, and we probably want somewhere around verse 3, I think. Sorry to skip around so much. Um, Now let's try verse 2 then. Right, thank you. So what characterises these people that God is going to bless? Well, they refuse evil advice, they won't follow sinners, and they won't join in sneering at God. But what do they do positively? They find happiness in the teaching of the Lord and they think about it day and night. They find happiness in the teaching of the Lord and they think about it day and night. Now again, I have a problem here. Maybe it's a personality thing, but I can only think about one thing at a time. (laughs) If I'm trying to concentrate on something, there has to be complete silence. The the, the slightest little distraction ruins it for me. So initially, I'm a bit bothered by this idea of I've got to think about the teaching of the law all the time, because then I'm I'm not going to get anything done. I can't concentrate. I can't do anything else whatsoever. I'm going, to be this, I'm going to turn into this incredibly godly and useless person. <laughs> and that doesn't quite seem right to me. So I've been trying to work out what this is talking about. Where do we come across the teaching of the Lord? Well, primarily, it's probably going to be the Bible, isn't it? But how do we experience the Bible? Well, we might well experience it through reading it and That's fantastic. It's great, a real gift and privilege to have access to the Bible, to be able to read it. And I know many of us use daily Bible reading notes, um, which are a real boon. They're a real aid, and they help us to do that. Um, Peter's got the bookstall open today, and there are lots of Bible reading notes available, aren't there, Peter, that can be ordered through the bookshop. So if, if you haven't used them before, if you think, well, I'd like to read the Bible every day, and I just don't know where to start... Peter, over there on the bookstall, can point you in the right direction. You can use some daily notes to help you and to suggest what to read. So we might read the Bible every day. Um, But what struck me when I was thinking about this during the week was that most of the people that this psalm was written for would not have been readers. And even if they were, there were no Bibles available. So their experience experience of the teaching of the law would have been what they heard. They would have had their family, perhaps their parents in particular, tell them the stories which are in the Bible. If they went to the temple, or later on if they went to the synagogue, they would have heard the Bible being read to them. So this isn't an instruction originally to go off and do lots of Bible reading. Rather, it's an instruction to hold in mind, to deliberately hold in mind, what they have already heard. To allow that to shape their thinking. So I think the idea here of finding happiness in the teaching of the Lord and thinking about it day and night is a more subtle idea that's to do with deliberately holding in mind all those stories, all those songs and psalms, um, all those bits of instruction which we've heard about in the Bible, which others have told us, or which we've read ourselves if we do read the Bible. It's about holding all of that in mind so that it shapes our thinking. So then as we go through the day and we have to make all those lots and lots of tiny decisions about how do I do this or which way do I go here or how do I reply to this person or you know, what do I do next in this relationship. 
that all of those little decisions we have to make, they're being shaped by holding in mind God's story as a whole. All those things we've heard and we've read about God's teaching. So, I mean, if you've got a favourite musical or a favourite story, that might happen anyway. You know, if you're... um, I'm not sure West Side Story is going to help me here particularly, so that's all about conflict. But anyway... um, Let's go, let's go with, with, uh, with Les, shall we? Let's go with Les Miserables. You know, there's a story about someone, if, if you don't know it, brief recap, someone who's in great adversity, who overcomes that adversity by doing what's good and right and helping other people. No, not too much of a spoiler. Is that, is that fair enough, Trevor? Will you let me get away with that? Yes. Just say yes and I'll carry on. Okay. Right. okay, so if you've got a story that you know is like that... That might inspire you. That might shape the way in which you go about living your own life. That's the kind of image I've got in my mind now for what this psalm is telling us. Find happiness in the teaching of the Lord. Think about it day and night. Find inspiration in what you have heard about the way God works in the world. Take your cue from Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Moses and David and Jesus. Think about how they followed God and how you might take a principle or an ideal from that and apply it yourself. I think that's what is being suggested to us here. It's not that we just have to squirrel ourselves away and become very holy but useless. Rather, it's deliberately holding in mind the things that we have known and heard and read from the Bible. Uh, One way of doing that, a friend of mine was telling me, is to memorise. I I heard from a friend just recently that they were taught at school that they had to memorise Psalm 1 and learn it off by heart. And that's something which many people have done over the years, is to take particular parts of the Bible and memorise them. And again, that's a way of deliberately, as it were, thinking about them day and night, planting it in our minds, choosing to hold it, in our mind, not just letting it go in one ear and out the other when it gets to that bit of the service. And there's something else that we can add to this. We're very privileged, and we maybe have something that the psalmist never anticipated. Because after the death and resurrection of Jesus, God sent the Holy Spirit... And God now relates to people in a much more direct and intimate way than was ever the case before. And the teaching of the Lord comes to us now not just in the stories of the Bible, but might actually come to us direct. When we sit quietly and listen, when we spend time in prayer, God might speak to any one of us. God can whisper into our hearts and minds. So we're not just left when we've got these complicated decisions to make, trying to work out what's right and what's wrong, you know, trying desperately to go through in our minds, is there anything I've ever heard in the Bible that is remotely helpful here? But we can also, as well as that, we can go straight to God. We can say to God, either quietly in our mind or out aloud, God, what do you think? Can you help me here? I'm puzzling over this. I don't know how to do this. Or I'm thinking about this situation and this person. What would be a good thing to do right now? And the Holy Spirit might just whisper in our ear, this is the way to go. This is the path. So, off you go. So, we're in a tremendous and privileged position, and we have the encouragement through all of it that God blesses those people. God blesses those who seek after the Lord's teaching. God blesses those who want to do what's right. God blesses those who are walking towards Him 
with the intention of growing closer to him. So let's take courage from that. Let's be glad, let's rejoice this morning that God blesses us um, as we seek to walk in God's ways. And we're going to sing a song uh, now, say the, if the band would like to come up again, um, that expresses our trust and our confidence in God, knowing that God will guide us and help us and protect us when we're seeking to do things God's way. We will trust Trust in God alone. Now, are we going to do the actions for this, Graham? Yeah, I'm not I, sure. I have a feeling, Sherry, we've got possibly some yeah, little helpers, um, have we? Okay. Uh, the although they may have run away. Okay. Well, let's stand if we're able and uh, sing this together. It's a very simple song, so you'll pick up the words and the tune very easily so I'd like you to concentrate on the actions if you're at all willing to give it a go oh, yeah, here we go just limber up a bit pray for ourselves and for one another and for the wider world. So Cynthia is coming up and she's going to lead us in our prayers. It's a wonderful song, that one, isn't it? We will trust in God. And so we trust in God as we come with our prayers this morning, our intercessions. And we come to our trusting Father through Jesus our Saviour, in the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray for the worldwide church. We pray for our leaders, Doug, Lisa, Simon, Jude, and others who are leading in different ways. May all preachers and leaders speak of your unconditional forgiving love and truth, bringing unity as is your will. We pray for us all as we listen to your word. Open our eyes and ears so that we may clearly hear the truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world. We pray for people, animals, and all creations suffering at this time through excessive heat, fires, floods, 
endless wars. We pray for an end to the war in Ukraine. We pray for more understanding and help towards cooling the world. We pray for all governments to work together for the common good of all countries. We pray for the women of the world who have been silenced. We pray for persecuted Christians, especially in India at this time. We pray for all others who are not being treated fairly because of who they are. We pray for ourselves. May we see others who are not like us as our neighbors. Convict and forgive us as we judge others. Help us to learn to love others as you commanded us to do. May we be a part of the healing of all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your blessing and guidance for King Charles and our government. May they serve with humility and integrity. We pray for the homeless, the refugees, and all those struggling in any way. We pray for those who are striking to get better wages. We pray for the right decisions to be made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And this holiday season, we give thanks and pray for new wine, and we pray for our brothers and sisters there right now, for family holidays, for guide and scout camps, for carousel stay and play, and for the summer fun day coming up. We pray for families on low income without school meals this month. We pray for all children to enjoy this free time and may you give them your protection. And we give thanks and pray for holiday at home. May all those who attend feel valued and have a joyous time. We especially pray for our older members as many clubs and places they attend are closed and often family members are away. Help us to be aware of one another's needs this month and offer hospitality. We ask your blessing on all those taking a well-earned rest this August, and we especially pray and give thanks for teachers. May we all feel more of your presence in this month of refreshment and renewal. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray a blessing on our community, and especially we remember those who live and work and visit Pampasford Road. May they all feel a blessing upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we'll have a time of silence as we remember before our Lord those on our hearts this morning, maybe because they're unwell, maybe because there's been a bereavement, or maybe there's a situation that's concerning you this morning. Also, there may be something that you're particularly thankful for this morning. We are. We've just come back from a wonderful family holiday, so we will give thanks. But there's all kinds of things on your hearts and your minds this morning, so I'm going to leave a short time of silence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers, and we thank you for all our answered prayers. So let us draw our prayers together by saying the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen.
God blesses those who seek the teaching of the Lord. And the teaching begins with T. T T-E-A. So you could take that as a little prompt, a little reminder. Every time you have a cup of tea, that could be a little prompt for you interspersed through the day to think, oh, what's, what does God have to say to me at this moment? What's going on? What am I going to do next after my cup of tea? Um, is there anything that I've ever heard in the teaching of God that would help me with that? Or is there something, whilst I'm waiting for the kettle to boil, I could ask God, Bring it before God now. God, I'm going to do this next. Please, will you be with me in it? Whatever it may be. God blesses those who find happiness in tea. Ching of the Lord. Um, Okay. Uh, (laughs) We're almost at the end. Thank goodness, he says. Um, Just a few few brief notices. Um, we're into the summer season. Some things are carrying on. Some things have stopped for the summer season. Um, everything's in the notice sheet that went out by email, but it's also helpfully printed and on the display board just by the doors as you leave the worship area. So if you want to know what's going on in the week, then do have a look at that. Um, the, there's no 11.45 worship service on Sundays through the summer, so not today and nor any of the Sundays in August. There are some extra special things, though, happening during August. On the 23rd, there's a fun day for all younger folk, and on the 8th, 9th, and 10th, there there is holiday at home in the afternoon um, for the people who used to be young. So do make, 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 make the most of those if they apply to you. And there's also the opportunity to help. So if you'd like to support those activities uh, for particular groups of people, there's plenty of opportunity to offer your support. And even, I believe, to make cakes for holiday at home. Um, so Jude is organising the fun day, but she's not here this morning. Alison is here organising... Where's Alison gone? Do you want to just wave? Alison's at the back there. She's waving if you want to offer a cake or something for holiday at home. Alison will be very glad to hear from you. Um, Talking of cake and of listening to God, that's the best link ever. Um, (laughs) The prayer team met before the service to listen to God. And they had a picture of a plate with a slice of cake on it. And they wondered whether that was an image of the time that it takes to produce uh, a finished cake and to be encouraged that we can be patient that God is working with us in God's own time, that we are all, as it were, still in the making. If that speaks to you or if the image of a piece of cake speaks to you in some other way and you'd like to pray with someone about it, do find me or any other member of the ministry team after the service and we'll be delighted to pray with you. Of course, it might be. God might be giving you that image to remind you to make a cake for holiday at home. Who knows? God speaks in many and mysterious ways. Well, shall we finish our worship together by offering God our praise once again? So we're going to sing a wonderful song. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O my soul. Bless his holy name. And this speaks about offering praise and worship to God throughout our whole lives, from the beginning to the end. So let's stand if we're able and offer our praise to God.
in all your holiness. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, we pray. Speak to us in those odd moments through the day when we turn to you. Give us your grace to live our lives seeking after you so that we may know your blessing. And may you bless us now, we pray, as we go from here, equipping us to walk in love and service to you every moment of every day. In the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. So, Christ Church, let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.